Anton Eppel. Okay, thank you very much. So it's my first time in Stockholm, first time at JFocus. I really enjoy it so far. I'm from Munich and um, I do a lot of HTML nowadays. Um, I actually don't do so much JavaScript. Actually, I've got a product that helps you get rid of JavaScript. But in this session, uh, I will have to do some JavaScript. So bear with me and uh, don't be mad at me if I screw up. Okay, so who of you is doing HTML5 uh, development? Okay, that's quite a lot of people. And um, just, just uh, to, to get to know you, uh, are you using Angular? Who is using Angular? Okay, who is using Knockout? Okay, so some people. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to show you how you can use um, NetBeans for doing a HTML5 development, and uh, I'll show you the flow, basically, how to develop it. So it's mainly going to be uh, demos, and um, that's why I'll switch to NetBeans right away. So in NetBeans, you've got um, a wizard that helps you create new uh, HTML5 applications and a couple of samples. So I'll just go quickly through the wizard. Let's call it demo3. And here you can choose if you want to have a template. You can store your own templates or use a pre-made um, pre, pre one. Uh, like Angular or Bootstrap or so, but for, for this demo, we are not going to use uh, a template, but go straight away. You can also uh, select some JavaScript libraries that you want to use. Um, we're also not going to do that. We are going to create our own JavaScript. And so what NetBeans creates for you is basically now just a site root uh, with an HTML page. And I'll add a couple of folders for CSS for images and for JavaScript. Okay, so um, first off, I would like to um, add some images. So let me go here. I'll copy this and just paste it. And the nice thing is I can uh, actually drag and drop it and it will uh, show up in my, um, in my HTML file. So I don't have to do that manually. Not a big thing, but nice. Okay, and then when I run the application, um, I can choose what browser I want to use. In my case, I used just a plain Chrome. I can use Safari, Firefox, whatever is available on the system, that means we'll find it. And I can also use uh, mobile devices to run it on there. Um, but for now, we'll just go with the standard Chrome. So I'll write some content, because this diff asks me to. So just h1. You've got the regular code completion that you would expect from an IDE. OK. Some text. And if I save and reload, it's there, nothing very fancy so far. So now I'll create some CSS. And let's say I want to make the, the H1 that we have here, the greeting uh, with a different background. So let's um, add a background. What is nice here is NetBeans has this code completion in the CSS editor. And you have, for example, like these little icons that show you where your CSS feature is supported on which browser. And you can decide if you want to add a polyfill or something else uh, if it's not supported here. Okay. And then I'll select a, a color. And I've got a color chooser here. Well, I'll just use any color, a random color. And again, I can use the CSS and just drag it here. And if I reload, it should be picked up. Just need to add the ID. And that means should already know that there is an ID greeting, and I can use that from code completion. So after that, um, I save and it updates. So that's basically plain 
uh, editing in the editor, showing it in the browser, save, reload, and so on. So nothing, nothing really exciting, but uh, NetBeans can do better, and, is, and, and that is when you use the browsers up here. Like for example, I can use the Chrome browser with a plugin. You have to install the plugin in Chrome first, it's available from uh, Chrome extensions. And if you run the application then, you will see that NetBeans connector is debugging this tab. That's what, it, what this means, uh, it's in German. Sorry for that. <laughs> and um, at that moment, I can start editing things and um, I don't have to reload the browser anymore. NetBeans will uh, immediately update uh, via the Chrome APIs, what, what you can see here. And what is also nice, you have um, in Chrome, you have this, ta uh, this menu here that you can use to, for example, uh, resize the browser. So now it's uh, way bigger than before. But actually we want it smaller. So you can see it side by side with NetBeans. So let's have a look. Um, so another thing that you can do is you can inspect in NetBeans mode. That means you can uh, select the elements of your page and the browser will actually, uh, NetBeans will actually follow. And you can see that down there on the left side, there is the DOM uh, inspector here. This is the browser DOM, the actual DOM. And uh, it's, it's working two ways, so you can walk the, the DOM and select something uh, or you can use the, uh, the pointer here and select an element and it will point you to the right element in NetBeans. So shut that off again. And now for example what I can do also from the DOM inspector is I can edit CSS rules. So for example I can say I want to have a new class for the image because I want the image to resize. So what I say is I want class logo, for example, and I want it to, uh, uh, to be applied here. And NetBeans will modify the CSS file and create the class. And it will also uh, modify the uh, HTML file and add the class here. So I can start um, doing something like, for example, I said I want to resize it with the browser. So I, I'll use view width and immediately uh, Chrome picks up and I can, uh, I can apply uh, uh, and I, I can apply this style. So what I really like about this workflow is the, the, the tooling is, is already there in Chrome. There's Chrome developer tools and they're really great. But the nice thing is here I'm in my editor and I'm editing something, I, I immediately see the changes. So if I have a dual screen display, it's really, really very comfortable to work like that. Good. I think that was this part. Ah, yeah. I wanted to show you something else with that, and that is you can also um, debug on remote devices, like for example here. I have uh, a phone, as you can easily see, and uh, probably the, the guys in the first row can confirm that it actually reacts on what I'm doing in NetBeans. So. <laughs> Does it work? Yes. <laughs> okay. So it also works with the iPad, but um, um, that's, that's a really, really nice thing. So you can really see on mobile devices how your application will look like, how it reacts. You can inspect the DOM, you can change things. Everything that I just did uh, is possible here as well. Okay. So the next thing I want to show is JavaScript. So I think I'm running out of time, so I will do my best typing very quickly. That was pretty amazing, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so I've got this JavaScript file here, and again I'll do the same thing. I'll just put it here, where I drag and drop, and I'll start writing code. This time I've got no shortcut. So let me see what I need to do. Um, I need to get... I want to use this greeter uh, class to... Um, 
uh, to to update dynamically update the text here on the on the page the h1 so what I'm doing is I say document get element by ID and it was greeting I think greeting and then I'll say greeter is new my app greeter and el inner text is greeter greet jfocus I tend to write uh, the F in capital letters <laughs> but I, th I think it's wrong okay uh, and let me run the application again in uh, in my Chrome browser and you can see the text has changed there is an exclamation mark and the F is in uh, small letters so uh, it seems like the JavaScript code is working so but let's try it again and this time with a breakpoint I've set a breakpoint here and what you can see here is you can hover over the elements in the page and I can see this is an EL by the way can you read the code back there <laughs> Yes? Uh, okay. You probably can't read what, what is in here, but you can see, like, you can inspect the element and you can see all the strings, all the functions and, and uh, in here. And um, that is really nice. And what you can also do is, like, you can um, inspect, you can evaluate expressions. So the tooltip here uh, tells me what this expression evaluates to. I just select it. I can also uh, add it to the variables, but I think I'll skip that. And um, because I want to show you one other thing, and that is you can also test this application and write unit tests for it, and I hope I'll make it. Okay, so what I need to do now is I'll create a new JS test driver configuration file. I like JS test driver because it's a lot like uh, JUnit. And I'll add it here. probably then I'll create a new unit test uh, no I'll create I'll run test JS test driver now it will ask me for the configuration file I put it here okay so now it's trying to test but there are no tests yet so I will have to create some. So in unit tests, I will create a new JavaScript file that is called test. I'll write my test, which is just like uh, just like with uh, JUnit unit test. You have uh, this. I create the greeter. I uh, do an assert equals. Hello world should be uh, the outcome of this. And let's do it like this. And uh, what I need to do in the configuration file is I need to add public HTML slash star.js. I need to make it and make my, my greeter uh, file known to the unit test, and then I can start running the unit test. And I see it fails. One test is running, it fails. So um, let's have a look why it fails. Actually, I know why it fails, but <laughs> maybe somebody can tell me why it fails. Exclamation mark. Yes, exclamation mark. And, uh, but we can find it out by debugging the test, simply debugging the test. and evaluating the expression and what you can see here the answer is hello world exclamation mark so I'll run through the test add the exclamation mark run it again and oh step over there Yes, the demo gods are really nice to me today. <laughs> okay.
just restart JS test driver. Test it again. And the test is running through. And I think it's the, that's already the end of this uh, uh, talk. So if you want to learn more, uh, just visit me after the talk. I'll stand here at the side because I have to. They'll kick me out right now. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you Thanks very much, Anton. Attention.